talk a bit about the stationary points and the points of inflection. Now I have the graph of x cubed minus x squared minus 2x plus 3 here. x cubed minus x squared minus 3x plus 3. So that's x cubed minus x squared minus 2x plus 3. That's f of x. Now, the first derivative is the gradient function. Let's concentrate on this here. What the first derivative tells you is how far y moves, for how far y moves as x moves along the tangent and also whether it moves up or down. If you consider the function it is f of x equal alright let's consider the function f of x equals uh, x cubed minus x squared minus 2x plus 3 then f prime of x equals 3x squared minus 2x minus 2 alright if I choose a point here let's zoom out and see where, where we are here say negative 1 I choose negative 1 and make x equal negative 1 then I have 3 oh no yeah this is going to be 3 times negative 1 squared minus 2 by negative 1 minus 2 that will be negative 1 squared is 1 3 plus 2 minus 2 is 3 this is a positive showing that the gradient the tangent has a positive gradient if we choose a point here say we choose 0 point all right says say 0 point 1 0 point 1 is where about here then the gradient function is 3 times 0 point 1 squared 3 times 0 point 1 squared minus 2 times 0 point 1 minus 2 0 point 1 squared all right let's use our calculator and just get this out of the way so in that case what we have is 3 by 0 point 1 squared 3 times 0 0.1 squared minus 2 times 0 0.1 minus 2 equals negative 2.17 so we get a negative 2.17 now the fact that we get a negative value indicates that if you should draw a tangent to the curve at this point it will be negative it will have a negative gradient let me try to draw it no it's not supposed to cut through the curve it's supposed to just touch the curve I want it to kind of look as if it just touches the curve all right say that is our tangent it has a negative gradient all right so you have that now where you have this tangent when x move say one unit and if y move three units the gradient is three at this point now if when x move one unit y move half a unit 
Then the gradient is changing y over changing x. Half. Half over 1. So the first derivative is telling us how far y move with each movement of x and whether y moves up or down. In this case, x moves from left to right, y is moving up. In this case, as x moves from left to right, y is moving down. Alright? So that's the first derivative. Now what about the second derivative? Let's erase these things. We have the first derivative here. The second derivative is f double prime of x would be 3, 2, 6, 6, x minus 2. That's the second derivative. Right? Now, the second derivative is telling you how much the first derivative is changing. In other words, while the first derivative tells you how much y moves as x moves, which we call the gradient, the second derivative tells you how the change in the movement of x and y is changing. In other words, how the gradient is changing. So, let's look at that. Let's erase these things for a while. Now, if we should find the gradient, or if we should substitute the value of x, or say negative 1, into the second derivative, what we would have is 6 by negative 1, negative 6 minus 2, which is negative 8. Alright? If we should substitute a value here, say 0 0.1 into it, what you would have is 6 by 0 0.1, it is 0 0.6 minus 2, which is, this would be negative, negative what now? 0.6 minus 2, negative 1.4, I think it is. You see, it's still negative. Now, if we should substitute 0 0.5 into it, which is right here, 6 times 0 0.5, 6 times half is 3 minus 2, which is 1. Positive. So we have a positive here. And at point 0.1 a negative. Now, the significance of that is this. We have the tangent here. The first derivative tells you the slope or high the slope is and in what direction. However, the movement in this first derivative is the movement of x and y only. In the second derivative, the tangent moves. So if we have another tangent here, we are looking at the difference between the first tangent and the second tangent and the direction and the direction that the gradient of the tangent is moving. So it's like speed and acceleration. If you're familiar with that in physics, speed is telling you how the rate of change from here to here, the rate of change of distance with time, right? Distance over time, speed is distance over time. Acceleration now is telling you the rate at which the distance over time is changing, right? Which is distance over time, over time. The rate at which um, the speed or the velocity is changing is the speed is one change and the acceleration is the change of that change. Here, the first derivative is a change in x and y. 
the second derivative is how the change in x and y changes so is it right a change of a change now you got negative values right along here and then at some point it changed to positive now what's going on here is this let me if i can get a tangent all right i want a tangent to the curve so tangent i want a tangent to the curve right okay this is my tangent to the curve let me make um, some adjustment to my tangent here let me make my tangent in blue color and make it thicker than it is here now if i move the tangent i don't want to see the trace I don't want to it's showing me the trace let me turn it off if i slide along the curve you see the front of the ta the right hand side of the tangent is swinging downwards and the back is swinging upwards the the left is swinging upwards i move my tangent further and the right hand side is still swinging down it swings down and down at some point it stops swinging and then the right hand side start to swing up upwards now so the direction of swing changes right the direction of the swing actually changes so at what point does it go down the front of it this right hand side go down and then up we're going to find that out but what this is saying that in the second derivative the second derivative is showing that this point would be a maximum point if there's a negative value at this point meaning what that mean negative value means is that the gradient of the tangent is dropping it's po positive it's still positive here but it's less so it's less positive the gradient is falling and falling until it becomes zero at some point and it become negative and more and more negative so the gradient is falling so you have a maximum point that's why when you find a stationary point here and the, the value of x is, is substituted you get a negative it means there's a maximum point now at this point you can see the gradient of the tangent is rising it's getting more and more it's negative but it's less less and less negative it becoming closer and closer to be positive so it's increasing when you substitute the value for this stationary point and you get a positive it means there's a minimum point because the gradient is increasing it's rising up and up and up and up all right now as you saw the gradient was swinging the right hand side swinging down slower slower and slower then it starts to swing up now the second derivative is telling you the rate of swing now if you want to find the rate at which the swinging stops and changes direction at no swing that means when you have the gradient of the line stop becoming negative and become positive or changes from positive to negative is where the second derivative 
is where the second derivative equals zero. This is six x minus two equals zero. You equate, equate this to zero, and then you find out what value of x this occurs. So six x minus two equals zero. Six x equals two. X equals two over six. X equals one third. So when x is one third, that is the point where the swinging stops. Let me see if I can locate one third more accurately. Let's get the curve upwards. One third, 0 0.3 is about here. Yeah, somewhere about there. All right, let me mark where it would be. Somewhere about here. So, if you follow the tangent, all right, and the swing, it goes more and more negative, negative, negative. It stops swinging. And then it starts to swing upwards now. The right hand side starts to swing upwards now. So it, the swing becomes positive. It changes from negative to positive at this point. It's called the point of inflection, right? And in this case, it is one third. So there you have it. The first derivative tells you the movement of y with each movement of x and whether it is up or down, positive or negative. The second derivative tells you the change in that movement of x and y. So while the first der derivative tells you the gradient of the curve, the second derivative tells you how the gradient is changing on the curve. All right? So that's it for this video. I will see you in the next video.